Students for a Democratic Society decided that community organizing in urban poverty areas might build a movement for changing this society. In June 1964, several SDS members moved into the Negro area of Newark, New Jersey. By fall, the ex-students and neighborhood residents had established the Newark Community Union Project, NCUP. This film follows some of NCUP's activities during September to November 1965. Any movement, any youth movement, or most youth movements are idealistic in nature, and I think this uh, program is one of the idealistic movements. But I think they came here with the wrong approach. I think they came here with a hostile attitude. It was just a few students at first, and then they, they grew. And uh, this is how they developed this uh, organization, to organize people, to make uh, changes. Organizing is something other than just, you know, saying the word. It's people getting out into the street and getting in, sitting in people's kitchens and living rooms or in the bedroom, wherever the people are, and talking to them. People realize that a great change will come, but enough to make them realize that people are not dummies and they will not sit back forever and let things go on as they have been going on. What do people in this neighborhood want to change? And I'd really like to hear from about the six women that are sitting there, or seven women or eight women, and from this group over here. Now, what was you the know, question? The question is, what do you want to change? What do you want to change? What is there about this neighborhood that you want to change, and that you think you can if we get enough people together? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I want a place for the teenagers so they can stay out of the hall waiting on the court. I could hear you, but they didn't. They didn't say one thing. want a place for the teenagers and young people so they can stay off the corner and out of the hallway. A place so they can go and have their fun and other than standing on the corner. Otherwise, you want youth to come. It's not safe. Nobody works. What would that place have in it? Would it just be a room like this? No. no. Uh, what kind of things would be in it? My best ping pong tables, ping pong cool. tables. That, that's all. Library, library. 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 library.
that those changes can't be imposed from above, that those changes might develop from the needs and actions of people in the community. So NCUP members organize. That is, they work in the neighborhood. They try to reach and involve people who have never been consulted, who feel outside society and irrelevant to power. They provoke discussions about need and the possibility of change. Why won't he fix that? Because he got dogs on it. He'll say, well, I'll send somebody down next week. Oh, uh, and uh, next week never come, you know. It's just like uh, what you're going to find a gold mine if in a rainbow. Uh, <laughs> and you don't find a rainbow, you see. It's time the poor man start doing something for himself. In Irvington, if it's snow today and you go out there tomorrow, it don't be no snow on the ground. There's no right. snow on the ground. It sweeps it. It sweeps it. That's right. And if there's snow here, it's going to lay here on this street for two, three weeks at a time if it what? doesn't melt. It'll lay here. It's 63, 61. It lays here for a whole three months until it's Friday. Yeah, yeah, but, but what happened to the tax money? Right. Went in their pocket. I've been wagging all the Yeah, the tax money went in somebody's pocket. Went in the power structure pocket. Be unemployment is the same way. Right. I mean, if you don't know somebody, or if you ain't up there, you, 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 you can't get a decent job. They offer a man, they offer me, I was drawing 40, 40, $42 a week unemployment. They wanted me to work for $1.15 an hour. So what the hell I get home with? You work can you be working for about $2 a week? I mean, they, it just, see, you got the wrong people upstairs running it for us. It's time that they know that they can be defeated, and it's time we get out and beat them. And this is what's going to change it. When you we get jobs, money, when we can have out. money to support our children, when we have the money to support our own selves and have homes like everybody else has, we don't have to live in this, then. Yeah, when, and all that stuff. If, if, oh. if we can get everyone to do this. If, how, if, this is a big word. You know what I'm saying? When I go down town and try to give me a job, and I go down to this unemployment office, you understand? I tell these people, I said, look here, I want a job. I said, I'm not working. I have four children. You know what they tell me? Well, you fill out this little application. I fill it out. You understand? Now they tell me, what are you capable for? I tell them, I'm capable for mostly anything. You understand? Because I know I have to say this. Why? Because I know I can't go anywhere and get me a job. See? Because I know the reason. You understand? I'm not committing myself to saying what is the reason, what ain't the reason, but I'm just going to say I know the reason. Now, what are you doing to me? They say, well, all right, well, you come back tomorrow, and then maybe Meta. we might have something for you. You understand? Yes, so. Now, I come back tomorrow. They tell me to come back next day and find it. You know what I'll be out there doing? Huh? I'll be out there down, down the market right here, trying to load trucks, trying to take care of my four children. You understand? And my wife. And this is the things that I'd be doing. But listen, what about this here? You get a, you go to court, you get a subpoena to move, right? They, they tell you to move. Okay. Now you're supposed to move, but where you gonna move to? Yet well, still, they, you, they got a court order to put you out. Still, your but where you go? When your furniture and everything is put on the street and your children are put on the street, then what are you gonna do? You tell me. You, you tell oh, me. Oh. And then they have a law against. Don't do this. Don't do that. Me and my don't, landlord. Don't go out me and, and my landlord to be fighting, fighting. Fighting to death. They say before don't take nothing, right? Before he told my is this kids the on point? Is this the point? They say don't do not <laughs> take. But still and all, you have to have your children out right. here starving with right. nothing eating. And you fighting. can't even get a job. Bloody murder. Now you just tell me, I mean, what's right? Well, see, Since we you know, know it's not right. Uh, we, we they want, know it's I not right. Yeah. They know it's not right. But they've been doing that so long and nobody, I mean, that's what people stop. If people get together and try to try to change that, then it could probably could be changed. If everybody get together, we can fight it. But as long as everybody walk on by and don't speak up and don't try to look out for not just themselves, for everybody, the majority, then we would all have a little more than we got right now. Yeah, the better advantage, right. sure. Amen. When organizers draw out the anger and frustration people feel about conditions in the neighborhood. They also draw out people's doubt and despair about the possibilities for change. People's experience indicates that nothing changes and that the power which controls the neighborhood is immune to anything they could do. Organizers have no easy answers to that doubt and despair. What they argue is the possibility that united action might build power. That if people could come together, decide what issues they wanted to attack and how best to attack them, an effective movement for change might begin in the neighborhood. So organizers try to get people to come to neighborhood meetings, where common problems can be discussed, where people's anger can begin to work. I'm going to say something. I'm, I am mad. That's why I, you know what I'm saying? I've been mad. I've been mad.
mad ever since I've been come to be a man. I've been mad, but there's nothing I can do about an individual. You understand? I am, I am mad when I see my people. They have to live in these damn houses. They have to pay this rent, the high rent. The man don't fix nothing for them. It's no different. The rich man control Nook. And it's, Nook is 52% Negro. 52% Negro. You understand what I'm saying? Now, and 90% of the Negroes are poor. 90%. Now you got, we got, we got, we got some rich white or rich um, colored men in office. But you know how they got up there? They got, they was whitewashed by a rich white man, and he put them there. He controlled them. That's not a damn thing working but his brains. Nothing but his brains is working right there. There's nothing working for you and me. You understand? Now it's time that we do stuff. Everybody wants to stand around and get on the corner and say, "Well, let's let's do something about what's happening to us." But now, there ain't even one way you're going to do it is you and Niger. You ain't going to do nothing. You can go marching up there with your gun. You can kill one. They're going to kill you. And that's the law. That's the law. That's the law's cause. Come up in the paper and say, well, why don't you go back to Africa, Asia? Where you from? We ain't from Africa, Asia. He's from somewhere, too. Where he go back? We're right here. We're going to stay here. We're going to build our place here. And we got to build on the foundation, and we're going to do it. Now, I want everybody to do it. Who disagree with it? Now, let's get a big hand for me. <laughs> the first meetings release anger and frustration. They also suggest that if so many angry people can come together, maybe something can be done. But if that anger is not focused on an action, meetings become repetitious. Nothing is decided. People get discouraged and stop coming. So organizers try to develop actions. They try to find issues which will involve people. All the places that didn't be fixed up, and all the places that didn't have steam heat, it will be rent control by them. Didn't he tell us that? They were the ones who told us that this building had 108 violations and then this building had 105. That was, that was early June, late May, early June, we went down to that rent control stuff. NCUP has worked with tenants in this building for more than a year. Mrs. Gaskins and Mr. and Mrs. Solomon each pay more than $100 a month rent. But their apartments are barely livable because the landlord refuses to make basic repairs. NCUP's constant complaints to housing officials and housing courts have proved useless. The building continues to deteriorate. Officials downtown that are there and are not doing anything and trying to hold up the progress of what is trying to be done, these things should be exposed. If we can get the Human Rights Commission to embarrass them into doing at least that research for us and finding out what's happening, then we can have them you know, get us that information, which we've been unable to get. I mean, Jesse's been down to City Hall and unable to find out. A few days later, Mrs. Gaskins, Carol, and Mr. Solomon went downtown again, this time to ask for help from the Human Rights Commission. They were skeptical because they had been downtown too many times before without getting results. No one had found a way to get results. Direct pressure doesn't work. Rent strikes, which everybody talks about, don't work because a tenant has no protection under New Jersey law. When a tenant refuses to pay rent, the landlord simply evicts him. Bad housing is a chronic issue for NCUP. The problem is to find an effective way to fight local slumlords without risking evictions. They decided to try the Human Rights Commission, a new city agency set up to deal with the problems in the Negro community. And also in my kitchen in the same way. And, um, for over three months now, I've been uh, after him about this and I've been doing it. Yeah, have you uh, filed any complaint with the appropriate city agencies? Yes. Did you file an official complaint or did you just go up and, you know, I mean, uh, did you f file an official complaint with the inspection department? They were filled out forms that we submitted to them from the, from the whole building. Do you remember the check-off forms we did? Yes. And then... They reported back to us. I don't, what was the violation, Jim? Yeah, I think it was 80 in one building. Uh, 
And, uh, it was not eight in one building and a hum that ate it up. Carol, I appreciate you making that raise. They left the commissioner's office somewhat hopeful. He had promised to cooperate and had guaranteed an inspection of their building. Three days later, housing officials came, made an inspection, and sent the landlord a copy of their report. Somehow the landlord found out which tenants had been responsible for the inspection. A week later, Mrs. Gaskins got a letter of eviction. That afternoon, she came to the NCUP office to talk about what had happened. I guess they did find out that I was one of the tenants that did go down. So he, he written me a letter this morning. I got a letter from him. And I'll tell you how he tricked me. He had the place to the real estate office, and I paid $150 before I moved in the place. Then everything was all torn up, and fields come in there the day before I moved anything in. He promised me to put locks on the front doors, which I had never had any locks since I was there. And the big hole still in the, in the floor, uh, just as you go in the front door, because I'm still going back down there and report that water's still leaking downstairs in my bathroom. After begging him and telling him all about the things got to be did in the house, and he run that my $115 a month every, every month. And uh, then, because I pressed him to get some of the things did in the place, he, he gave me a big no, he was just sick of it for him being so stupid. <laughs> Oh, me. It's 5.30, and the meeting starts in two hours. NCUP had been trying to force the landlord to repair. Now they were faced with the problem of preventing Mrs. Gaskin's eviction. The staff was already preparing for the monthly meeting of the PAG, the local forum of the War on Poverty. They decided that the PAG might be willing to help that the PAG stop and consider the eviction of a PAG member and a member of the Board of Trustees, right? Gaskin, okay. She has 101 violations according to city official records. Uh, she's had numerous inspections and she had a promise one week, let's say Friday, from 3 to direct to the Human Rights Commission that something would be done about her building. What's been done is today she got an eviction notice from the landlord. Okay. So the real cause of poverty is that the landlord fleeces the tenant so much the tenant doesn't have enough money to get out of poverty. Okay. So you form a committee, give it full power to act, and back up uh, Emma's rent strikes. So you, you want someone to get up and make that motion down at the PAT meeting tonight to support her in her rent strike. And otherwise, go back and tell what has happened so far in the last couple of weeks, what's been going yeah. on. And then ask for them to form a committee from the PAG of yeah. the members that are down there tonight. Give us support. Okay. Will you be prepared to, to uh, talk about the history of, what, of what's gone on in this building, how long you've been fighting him, the fact that you've you know, that you've been paying rent all the time, but that you've been trying to get the landlord to fix up, that there was something like over 100 uh, violations in the building, that you've been to see the Human Rights Commission. Because that, you know, it seemed to me that if, that if people were presented with, with yeah. that whole picture, that, you know, they might react more favorably. I will fight as long as I can fight. Even if he send, some, send somebody in to set me out, have the truck sitting out there, and they have to set my things in the truck if I have one out there. The PAG is the People's Action Group. It was set up by Newark's War on Poverty to encourage community participation in the poverty program. NCUP members are active in the PAG because they see it as a new center of power in the neighborhood. They hope that the PAG might find a way to block Mrs. Gaskin's eviction. One of the members of the area board wanted to uh, speak on, on housing. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Gaskin. A uh, question I would like to ask first. In case if you are in the in case if you in uh in landlord's house, pay $115 an hour. And the people's up on the bathroom leaking out on them. You tell about it for at least three months you don't do anything about it. And um, when you had to put pressure on them, to go down to the uh, Human Rights Commission 
to uh, get action from you. Then he wants to evict you from your apartment. Then I want to know what action can be taken. Then, probably. Did everyone hear her? Anyone there? Uh, it's it's open for discussion what she's talking about. Yes? I think this would be a legal thing because I think it would be pretty difficult to even discuss this area and give her an advice on what to do in this area. I think that this is a problem that this group should be actively involved in because we are right here in the midst of this area where these sort of things are, are happening every day. I happen to have lived in this particular building where Mrs. Gaskin and I resides for three years. And I do know of the conditions that does exist in that particular building. And I would like to just point out that it is a 17 uh, family house, uh, 14 at least, that is, 14 family houses. And I even uh, added up the monies that he gets off this one particular building in one year. <laughs> and I would just like to point out that it's not even fit for a pig to live in. Excuse me. <laughs> I would like to just suggest that we work from this one angle because he is the one landlord that really des deserves it. Let's just try to work on the families that live in that building where Emma now resides and have that rent strike now where she lives. If he so he tries to evict her, because I know the steps are falling down, the doors are knocked out, and that house had deteriorated long before Emma moved in. It's not that she is a filthy woman, because her apartment is much better than mine. But, <laughs> but the building was deteriorating when the Jews moved out. This I know. And he is getting more rent off of Emma and people like Emma than it is even worse. She has no lock on her door. The steps are falling down, the doors are knocked out. She did not come out. It was knocked out when she moved. So if we can get this rent strike going from her building, 14 families hold out that rent for the month of January. If Emma moves out, good. And we got it. Just evict the whole building. <laughs> The PAG voted to support Mrs. Gaskins and decided to picket the landlord's house. The picketing was symbolic and everybody knew it. Nobody expected the landlord to withdraw the eviction. The talk about rent strikes was also symbolic. Even if all the tenants in the building had withheld their rent, the landlord could easily have evicted them and found new tenants. Without effective means of forcing landlords to repair, all action becomes symbolic. Landlords remain free to charge exorbitant rents and neglect their buildings. Many organizers feel that if NCUP could find a way to change housing conditions, it could build a massive movement in the neighborhood. But nobody knows how. No one has the answer. So Mrs. Gaskins moved out rather than be evicted. But her building continues to deteriorate. The problem remains. My son got killed last year, the 25th of December, and I want a traffic light. <laughs> it wasn't that white kids got hit, they, well, they feel different. And, and I think these folks out here feel different too. They don't want their kids hit, and I know the white man don't want his kids hit, so the black man don't want their kids hit me. Uh, can I say something? Well, just a little while ago, this little boy almost got run over. And the cop didn't, the only thing, a lady shouted out, you know, that's why we need a stoplight. Instead of saying yes, he says, no, you don't need a stoplight. You need mothers out here to watch their kids go across the street. As old as I am, you need me to tell me I'm going to get my mother out here to watch me go across the street? That's full of stuff. Where do you want? Stop it, sir! Where do you want her? No! Sometimes NCUP organizes around an issue in which the course of action seems clear. 
When months of writing letters and sending petitions downtown brought no results, people went into the streets to demand a traffic light. Deliberately blocking traffic means exposure, means openly risking arrest. People were cautious. They found no way to confront the police. You can't scare the police. You don't think so? No. How can you scare them? Too many. You can't scare the police. When you scare the police is when you go to jail. When you go to jail. Yeah, somebody is... Uh, what do you think we should do? To uh, get the street lights on? Uh, do you know anything about philosophy? Yeah. Do you remember Plato's statement? Do you remember Plato's statement? Which one? The one that he made when he said uh, uh, the seed of a rising nation is in the blood of a martyr? Yeah. All right, that's it. That's it. Somebody's got to pay some dues. Yeah, well, how come you didn't come out? I didn't come out on yeah, this. I didn't come out on this because I got three Mickey Mouses at home and the politician has got me a job and I can feed my three Mickey Mouses. And that's, I am not But coming, that's why people not, don't go to jail, right? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I have been to jail. Everybody says... I've been to jail. I, I've go. been to jail. And and uh, I'm only telling you, I don't want to do it for a lost cause. All right, what day, what day next week will you go to jail? Well, I'll tell you. I'll go to jail. What day? When are you going to have it? You pick the day. I'll get the people. All right, then they can put me in jail that day. day? I think I'll get prepared for this. Wednesday? Huh? How about Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah. You want me to handle uh, it in my own method, in my own way? What's that? Huh? Uh, I'll have people that's willing to go to jail. Yeah, okay. All right. For I a red you. light. This is this is for a good cause. This is not for no uh, uh, shamming. Right. All this right. is for a good cause. We need a red light here. All right, what day? I tell you, you said Wednesday, right? It'll be Monday, don't matter to me. All right, uh, see, I would I would rather get locked up on Monday, All so right. I'll be out Thursday for my payday. All right. See, Wednesday, I'll either get busted and I won't be able to All feed right. my kids. Well, exactly but Monday, I might be able to uh, get out in time to get my check to feed my children. He didn't show up on Monday, but people went back into the streets again. This time the police were cautious. Instead of clearing people out of the streets, they sent for the precinct captain. Now I can't promise you a traffic light. I don't have the right to do that. But we have been in conversation with the deputy mayor. That's Paul Riley. Now he has given me to go ahead to promise you people that within 48 hours, there will be stop signs put at this location. Where, to, where, well, I, where you get them will be decided by the deputy mayor in the morning. I don't handle the traffic division. I'm going to, I'm going to give you something temporary while I can. Now, I don't handle, I don't handle traffic. The point is this, that the stop signs will be put up pending the survey to be made with regard to the traffic and if, if traffic lights are needed. Stop signs went up within 48 hours, but after a month of no word about a traffic light, people decided to demonstrate again. This time a group of city officials showed up, including the director of police and the human rights commissioner. Yeah, director's office, and Inspector right. Melch is the person who's involved right. in the director's office. And that's the man And they have made, now the director tells me, I didn't know until just now. He tells me a recommendation has been made to Trenton for a light. That's, that's right. up to Trenton to make the decision. Finally, yeah. The proof. That's up to make the final proof. Now, I'll tell you one thing. We did this with the traffic, you know, with the stop signs. This is illegal. But we've done it because we realize there's a problem here, which the state does not realize. Now, it's up to the state now to do something about these uh, stop signs, too. Keep them all paid going down there to talk to the city. All they got to do, we left it so convenient for them that all they had to do was pick up a telephone, dial a number, and say, 
We are still working on it, Paul. We are trying to get you right, or we're not going to get you right. You're not going right, to tell Trump, us. Trump, Mr. Tom, Mr. Trump, you, you, this is, you might be well right in this. All I'm going to say is today, I'll communicate with you. Now, you give me the names of the people right now, and I'll get back in touch with you, let you know what's going to happen. Now, we can't talk about what has happened in the past, but I'll get back in touch with you to let you know what the process, what the progress is on the light. Now, who do you want me to get in touch with out here, and I'll get in touch with you. Now, anybody who give me their names, I'll get in touch with them. Oh, you have my name. You call me, huh? You get in touch with them. People ask me. Let me get in touch with you. What's your name? I can't say what will happen tomorrow. What is your name? So all you do is take, give them your, you right. name. That's all I can And I think you all get in name. contact with the people here. That'd be much easier, don't you think so? That's right. And one more thing, and final thing. Please have a little patience. Just have patience. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, the city yeah, of Newark yeah, is doing that better. No, but please, no. Please, no. Just have patience. Have patience. Have patience. Give them time. They're going to do a job. Every one of you going to be satisfied here. Yeah. And those promises were that he would, and they would seek to get all of the information on the traffic light for this area, and that he would call me and notify me before, by Friday of this week, what taking place and what they know. Now, to date, uh, they have called me, he has called me, he has told me that they've set up a meeting with a group of the people from the block, with the mayor, next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. He said that uh, Bez and, and, and uh, Avon was approved. That's right. Uh, they really do need a light, Bez. Now, and our light, the light for Bez and Avon has been approved, and it's only a matter now of... Uh, getting the money from the city and that shouldn't be too big a problem. We've had an invitation to be at the council meeting when it comes up before the council for approval. The mayor and his staff were persuasive. Most of the people left the meeting convinced that the traffic light was a reality. Only a matter of time. First of all, you have to go through bureaucratic procedures in order to get certain things that you want. Uh, for example, when you want a traffic light in the city of Newark or any other city or municipality in New Jersey, you, you, your own department or your own city must make a survey. And there are certain standards that must be um, uh, met with in order to uh, justify a light. And after you do meet these standards, you uh, apply to People your were confused. Council. The mayor had said that the light was justified, that it had already been approved. Now the city was saying that it had no power to get a traffic light, that it was up to the state. The city's conflicting stories continued. Nobody could get a straight answer. Without knowing who had the real power to get a traffic light, people were unclear about what more they could do. They themselves send their own representative to make a survey. And if then they feel that it's justifiable, they will give you their approval. And that's when you get your light. After 10 months, there is still no traffic light on the corner. As far as anyone knows, the city does not intend to install one. Petitions, street demonstrations, even a promise from the mayor were clearly not enough. The city had absorbed all activity by agreeing to install a light and then claiming it had no power to do so. NCUP never found a way to break through that duplicity. Instead, organizers and the people in the area shifted their focus. They set up a new project office on the corner and began to consider a more permanent approach to neighborhood problems. The United Committee for Political Freedom is a coalition of Negroes, whites, and Puerto Ricans. Uh, primarily of civil rights orientation that have come to see that if they're going to achieve their goals as far as civil rights is concerned, that they must be involved in the political process of our county. Late in August, NCUP was approached by George Richardson, head of the United Freedom Ticket, with a request for support and an offer to join his coalition. Once we get this power, then these people are responsible to us, whether they be white or black, and we're the people that can make these votes. And this is what we're attempting to do now. We feel certain that we may be able to come up with anywhere from 25,000 votes. Oh, don't tell how far we're going to go. I think in NCUP we have, uh, for the first time, really reached uh, members in the grassroots uh, community. I think uh, another thing that this group can accomplish is to really to develop 
uh, real grassroots uh, leadership. Richardson's offer caused a heated discussion about the nature of NCUP and the nature of politics. Joining the Freedom Ticket seemed to offer a chance for NCUP to increase its power and to reach new people through political organizing. But there were doubts. I come burdened with enormous prejudices against politics. My whole life has been spent trying to figure out I mean, how stinking the political system is. And I don't really understand how all of a sudden we're going to step in and change it. I'm not saying that, that Rich is going to walk on a chalk line. I mean, I, but I do say that, uh, it, uh, that he can't do a damn bit worse than the people in the old uh, they're doing. And then you can make him do a little bit better because he, he, it, it's a damn movement behind it. When George Richardson sets up a coalition and sets all the ground rules, and they're setting up a structure over there right now, and then a couple of people walk into that situation. I mean, what choice do they have but to accept a lot of the stuff? They have no choice. And that's what I'm worried about. Do you know about the, the Freedom Campaign? Yeah. United Freedom Ticket? Well, the group I work for, you know, is tied in with that. We decided to support them. Uh, that guy named George Richardson, who's the head of that ticket, who maybe you heard of. He's from the Central Ward. He's a real good guy. I mean, he's, you know, he's kind of a politician. You know, and you know what a politician means, you know, all that yeah. stuff. But yet, but yet he's really into things. Like he was a bartender in the Central Ward for a long time. And there's a lot of real people that know him, you know, and, he, and he's, like he's, you know, he's not a rich man. You know, and those things really make you think that he's probably pretty straight, you know. So we tied in with him and three of our people, <coughs> a guy named Melvin Higgins who lives on Hunterdon, and a girl named Anita who lives, um, there's up on Osborne Terrace, I guess. And a guy named George Fontaine, who's been with for us for a long time. Uh, they, they ran for state assembly. The problem of NCUP's relationship to politics was never resolved. Instead, NCUP was swept into the freedom ticket and absorbed into the intensity and excitement of the campaign. has dedicated themselves to this movement. This is not going to be an easy task, because that man sitting down at the Hall of Records, he has the power where they control the courthouses, they control the institutions, the prisons, the highways, all of our county hospitals. All this power they have, and they don't intend to let us take it away from them. But we got that one thing that can take it away from them, and that's that vote. Vote for the United Freedom Ticket, and be free. That's blind thing. Vote for the United Freedom Ticket. The United Freedom Ticket want to see all our children get a decent education. I say to you, let's all join this fight for freedom. Let's support the United Freedom Ticket by coming out November the 2nd and vote United Freedom, line B. Better housing, better police protection, vote United Freedom Ticket. For State Senator George Richardson, David Blumgard, Frederick Waring, and Ken Stephenson. For Freeholders, Stanley Winters, Reverend Horace Sharper, and Hilda Hidalgo. Vote United Freedom. Let's join this fight for freedom. Let's support the United Freedom Ticket. A campaign generates its own momentum and its own rhetoric. Faced with the need to reach and influence a lot of people quickly, Organizers found themselves using the tools and style of traditional politics. Sound trucks, leaflets, campaign slogans. By coming out, November the 2nd, vote United Freedom, line D. This is a fight against police brutality. Mm -hmm. Same thing, huh? A fight against job discrimination. Yeah. A fight against half-day school safety, slum landlords. And, and we are trying to bring rent control back to the city of New. There are people living in cold water flats, yeah, paying $25, $30 a week. It shouldn't happen. And why is it happening? Because we don't have rent control here. Have they had uh, our people in there before? Sure, sure. Have they have been in there? Have they done anything? They haven't done anything, no. Because why do we think that these coming here would do something? Because we are not under the no board. Oh, this back up in the board. Right. Vote for the United Freedom Ticket on my day.
on Tuesday, November 2nd, vote for the United Freedom Ticket on Mon D. And drug discrimination. I don't know what kind of people is going in now, you know what I mean? Do you have any ideas how... It's people that has lived under these conditions and, and I am one of them. Has no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we've had our people in there before and they haven't been able to, to, uh, to do this. Sure, right? these before. people that was in before. Now she said, now she's part of this. I want to know if she has new ideas that's better than the old ones, you know, that they had the before. Ones that was under, so they couldn't uh, get it before. The ones that was under before were under the power machine, the structure of the and power. And not. And they you are, are not? not? No. We, no. We're not on no power machine. What power machine was that? The Democrats. The, the city Hall. Oh, the city this is the city Hall. Oh, this is the city Hall. This is the political party. That's right. If you know what the party is, you know what the Democratic Party is, you know that the boss is Dennis Carey. This is the third party. I mean, I, I understand politics, period. This is why I was asking her There's as an individual. Two. There's yeah. two. There's always There's that up and down. There's Republicans and Democrats. This is the third party. There's two. 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 Oh, a third party. That's right. right. Yeah, this, this is a third no party. No Democrat, no Republican party. Oh, yeah? Right. In Newark. Right. That's right. It's the best time to have. See you at the poll tomorrow. You're going to all join this fight for freedom and support the United Freedom Ticket tomorrow? I'm going to support it, and we'll be there tomorrow. And I'm going to bring out everybody I know. I want you to tell me what line you're going to vote on. On line D. And you want to be free, vote line D. That's line D. November 2nd, which is tomorrow. It will only take a few minutes, so let's get out and vote for the United Freedom Ticket, Line D, the United Freedom Ticket. During the last weeks of the campaign, many organizers were uneasy. The sound trucks, the leaflets, the canvassers had all gone out, but there was little feedback. Nobody was sure about how effectively the Freedom Ticket had gotten through to people. Here comes this group, late calling themselves the United Freedom Ticket, which no one has ever heard of. And it says it's running on a third party, which very few people ever heard of. It says it's not really running to win, it's running to get enough votes to defeat the Democrats or scare the Democrats, which no one has ever heard of. It becomes a bond a little because I can see that if you're going out and you're talking to a whole group of people, that you don't know and that you may not see again, that if you start talking about, you know, trying to get the Democrats to lose and that kind of stuff, that either they won't understand, they'll think you're Republicans, or, you know, that it just won't make any sense to them. You got the great mass of Negroes stuck in the South Ward and the Central Ward. And the whole country hangs together on the fact that these people have been brainwashed to either be afraid to vote, or if they do vote, they vote for the Democratic Party. Line A all the way. Line A all the way. The Democratic Party is here to stay. The Democratic Party among Negroes has the highest image. And this is what these fractional groups fight. See, more or less than fighting the local Democratic Party, they will be fighting the national image of the Democratic Party. And, uh, uh, I'm a Democrat by choice, and that was a choice that I made, and I'm not going to tell you the Democratic Party is without fault, but certainly most of the gains that have been made by uh, minority groups, uh, working class people, has been made within the Democratic Party. Line A all the way. From Hughes to Matthews, you cannot lose. This is the way to protect your gains, protect your potential. Voting Line A all the way. The rest of the day. Line D, all the way. Please vote Line D, all the way. The only one going to be is Line D. The white folks over there, they don't free up. The white folks over there going to free up. Line D going to free up. The white folks over there. Look at that. Look at them shoes. Line D ain't free as damn, Sam. Line D going to free up. Line D going to free up. Line D going to free up. Dennis Carey, yeah, Dennis Carey ain't nothing like you. You got those jobs to give nobody. If I have some jobs to give me, you got it. Line all the way.
for the little green. We just analyze the results, and it appears that our ticket done somewhat better than we done in 1963. <laughs> by Governor Hughes, who we all supported, we just carried away with the panic. The freedom ticket was crushed by the Democratic landslide. Its vote was so small it was barely noticed. Organizers were sobered by the defeat. Free from election pressures, they began to reconsider the limitations of the campaign and the nature of NCUP's involvement in politics. We're sitting here, we have the foggiest idea of, of where those votes came from. And when somebody asks you, you know, when somebody asks you uh, how many votes do we expect to get, people say it could be thousands, you know, it could be as high as 25,000. On the other hand, it could be 10,000. And the question is, where are they going to come from? Well, obviously, they're going to somehow magically be attracted to the freedom ticket. You know, they're going to be brought by this sort of charismatic Richardson type of, you know, campaign. And that seems to me that this, that uh, without being redundant, that this is not the basis of real power. That this type of campaign where you, could, you don't know where the hell votes are coming from, where you're trying to vaguely project an in, in, image into this, you know, this sort of uh, unstructured black community that somehow just comes out and votes magically and then goes back, is exactly what people like myself thought of elections before I came to work here. Canvassing didn't go on, contact didn't go on. Real organizing of any sort, whether it's around the campaign or around issues, didn't go on. And so, uh, but I separate that from our role because I think our role began to change people in the freedom ticket, number one. And also, it was no different than a goddamn big picket line. I mean, our presence at those polls and going around the Central War talking to people were just as, as vital, it seems to me, as having a picket line at City Hall. Uh, face it, I mean, we're going to get 50 people to City Hall for a picket line. We are only going to get 10% of the total vote, but it's, I think it's an equally significant threat and it, and it and, you know, involves the possibility of growing. I and mean, we can see ourselves as a, an election like the November election as a fringe element that's beginning to, you know, to fight politically. For two years, NCUP organizers have worked these neighborhoods, bringing people together around a variety of needs. NCUP's continuing activity to fulfill those needs has created a constant pressure for change in the neighborhood. But in spite of all NCUP's activity and all the people NCUP has organized, little concrete change has resulted. It may be that NCUP's methods are wrong that the change they want is possible through different means. But what if the question of method is irrelevant because the kind of change NCUP wants is impossible to achieve within this society? What then should NCUP and all the people it organizes do? Robert, we may have